the new Xiaomi Su7 and the U7. There are crazy performance versions of both of those cars with around 1,500 horsepower. Ferrari has gone and bought one of these and is now testing it at its headquarters in Italy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. This was meant to be apparently a secret, and Ferrari, I don't think, wanted people to know about this, but um, the Xiaomi Su7, the ultra version, which has the EV track record at the Nürburgring, was spotted in Italy at Ferrari's headquarters. Ferrari apparently are going to reveal their, well, their first ever EV in the spring of next year, and I think it's going to be called the Electrica, so interesting name, but yeah, anyway, apparently as a result, they bought a Xiaomi Su7 Ultra and it was spotted driving out of Ferrari's headquarters at their Marinello location in Italy. You can very clearly see what car it is, so um, it's obvious what's going on. Ferrari are doing their due diligence, right? This is a really quick car and the Su7 Ultra lapped the Nürburgring in seven minutes and five seconds. That means it's three seconds faster than the Porsche Taycan. But apparently there's an Ultra prototype, which will go on sale at some point in the future, say Xiaomi. And that does the Nürburgring in six minutes, 22 seconds, meaning it's the fastest production car. Well, if it goes into production, would be the fastest production car in the history of the automotive industry to lap the Nürburgring. Only two cars have beaten it, Volkswagen's IDR Racer, which you can't buy, and the Porsche or the Porsche 919 Evo Le Mans, Le Mans race car. So the Su7 Ultra, Nürburgring Ultra prototype, whatever it is, that thing is clearly the fastest car ever if it goes into production on every metric going around corners. People say electric cars can't go around corners, but to get around corners, to do the Nürburgring in 6 minutes 22, this track has more corners than you can remember. Uh, I've driven it many, many times on video game PlayStation, on the play on the Gran Turismo 4, 5, 6. So it's, um, it's a very difficult track. Clearly Ferrari is saying, well, okay, this is a Chinese car, but unlike a lot of people who are just slagging off Chinese cars saying, oh, they can't go around corners. Actually, this can, no question it can. It's got 1,526 horsepower and one that's 1,138 kilowatt, meaning it can do zero to 100 kilometers an hour or zero to 62 miles an hour in 1.98 seconds. Top speed is 360 kilometers an hour. That's 223 miles an hour, which is just blisteringly fast. And remember, this thing does have carbon ceramic brakes as well, massive brakes to slow this thing down because they're very, very heavy cars. Weighs about 2,450 kilos. That's like, what, not far off 6,000 pounds. Anyhow, apparently, the CEO of Xiaomi also likes Ferrari, uh, Li Jun. And he was spotted last year driving a red Ferrari Purisang SUV. I don't know if they were testing that out uh, to work out development of their U7 SUV, potentially, I don't know. But company insiders have said the Italian brand's first EV will be a limited production car to get people used to the idea of an engineless car with a horse on the hood, and that it's the second EV which will take on a crossover-like form that will be more significant. Ferrari has delayed that car until 2028 due to what they say is weak demand in the luxury EV space, said Reuters. Now, of course, the truth is that um, EV sales worldwide are up by 30% this year. So really what it is, is, you know, Porsche, Ferrari, BMW, all of these car, you know, Lamborghini, um, these car brands, they're just, they're not, they're not set up to be EV manufacturers. They're set up to be manufacturers of internal combustion cars. They just started making hybrids and that's been a challenge for them. But to make a fully electric car and do it really well, it's actually quite difficult because software is what is really the main thing. The, plat the software is the big part of the platform of these vehicles. It's, a, it's, an, it's like building a very different product. So that's why Ferrari is taking so long to get their heads around um, making their first EV. It's not because there's weak demand. That's just, uh, that's just like an excuse for saying, actually, mm, this is harder than we thought. We want to make sure this thing is awesome because if it's not, people are going to like look at us and go, well, maybe you're not part of the future. So guys, what are your thoughts? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.
To the surprise of absolutely no one, the Xiaomi SU7 Ultra has smashed the Nürburgring racetrack record for production EVs, meaning it just destroyed the time of the Porsche Taycan Turbo. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I'll be at the Melbourne EV Auto Show. Come along. Tickets in the link in the description below, and you can get tickets for 25% off if you click on that link. Xiaomi S27 Ultra, it's nearly, guys, it's so close to being the fastest car around the track, the Nürburgring. So the Nürburgring's what, 21 kilometers long. I have driven the Nürburgring, I'd say I've done about maybe 150 laps of this 21 kilometer, no, not, not that, not 150. I've probably done a thousand laps actually. Now I think about it as a kid growing up playing Gran Turismo. I drove this track all the time. It's incredibly difficult to drive around this track. So many sharp, tight corners, very fast corners, really intimidating, difficult. It's so easy to slide on the grass. So many times here going for the, trying to get the gold or the silver medal and I would crash, right? This is a tough track. And the fastest cars in the world, I'm talking absolute hyper cars, did it in, I believe, six minutes and 46 seconds. Six minutes and 46 seconds. We had a hyper car, two seats, super lightweight, just intended only for racing on tracks really. And this did it in seven minutes and four seconds. So it's only about 18 seconds behind the fastest car in history to ever lap the Nürburgring, the fastest road legal car. This is of course the fastest EV though, but it shows you, doesn't it? What's going to happen? Because imagine this car was a two seat car and it was smaller. So it was an actual sports car it could easily win. It could easily break the record if that was in place, if those conditions were in place. You made that battery pack a bit smaller. It doesn't need to be so big. If the car's smaller, lighten it up a bit, make the body out of carbon fiber as they have with these other cars that have done six minutes, 46, and it would easily beat them. So it shows you that electric cars are capable of easily in race conditions, beating internal combustion. The time, seven minutes, and four seconds. So that's actually 4.957. So seven minutes and five seconds. How does that actually compare, right, to other cars that have done this race? Well, I should point out the Xiaomi SU7 Ultra prototype. So the performance prototype version of this car actually did break the record, but it's not uh, a car you can buy. So it's not an official record. It actually did it in six minutes and 46 seconds. So that's actually the fastest car. If it was road legal and you could buy it, that would have been the fastest car ever to lap the Nürburgring. But the time of the actual legal version that you can buy is seven minutes and four seconds. So there's quite a big difference between the two of them. The fastest time that a Porsche has ever done it. Well, the brand new Porsche Taycan Turbo GT did it in seven minutes and seven seconds, 707.55. This essentially was two seconds or actually technically three seconds faster than the Porsche Taycan. 